Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kudrowski and this organic chemistry lab video covers synthesis of tert butyl chloride by an SN1 reaction, part three, distillation of the product. Start off the experiment with two ring stands and a ring. Then get a variable transformer like this, which has a dial that can adjust the temperature, plug it into the 120 volt wall current, get a heating mantle, and plug that heating mantle into the variable transformer. Here's the flask we're going to distill from. Clamp that securely to the ring stand and then put the heating mantle underneath making sure there's firm contact between the bottom of the mantle and the flask. Remove the glass stopper from the flask and get a three-way distillation head. Plug that into the top of the distilling flask. This will allow us to connect a condenser and thermometer adapter. The thermometer adapter consists of a glass piece and a rubber boot that goes over the top of it. Put the rubber boot over the top of the glass part and put the glass part in the top of the distillation head. Next, push the thermometer through the rubber boot and into the apparatus. You want to make sure that the bulb is in the right location. This is important for getting an accurate temperature. The bulb should be just below the elbow of the three-way distillation head as shown here in this picture. Next, we're going to put on a condenser. The condenser connects to the three-way adapter and needs to be clamped to make sure it doesn't fall over. Clamp it securely, then secure with one of these blue Keck clamps. Next, get a vacuum adapter, which looks like this, and secure that to the end of the condenser, again using a Keck clamp. Next, we'll need a flask to catch the distillate. This could be just about anything, but today we're going to be using a round bottom flask. So attach that to the apparatus and again secure with a Keck clamp. In the next step we're going to be attaching hoses to our condenser. Attach one end of the hose to the hose barb on a cold water faucet near a cup sink on your lab bench. The other end goes into the apparatus and should go into the bottom hose barb of your condenser. It's important that the condenser water go in through the bottom. Next get another piece of hose and attach that to the top hose barb. The other end of the hose goes to the cup sink. The idea here is that water is going to go in through the condenser through the bottom and out through the top. This arrangement is important because it will allow air bubbles to escape out the top of the condenser. If you get it hooked up backwards you'll notice that the condenser doesn't stay full of water very well. Turn the water on and be careful not to turn it on too quickly. You just need a gentle flow of water through the condenser. Really a trickle is good enough. If you turn it on too fast there's a risk you could blow the hoses off. Don't forget to add a boiling chip to the apparatus. Boiling chips are just porous stones that provide a surface area for bubbles to form on. The purpose of boiling stones is to smooth out the boiling. The idea is we want a stream of small bubbles rather than a few violent big bubbles. Next, turn on the variable transformer. This model has a toggle switch to run at either 120 or 140 volts. It really doesn't matter which one you switch, just turn one of them on. You should see the light on the variable transformer light up. Next, turn the dial up to about 50%. The dial controls the voltage to the heating mantle, which will control how hot it gets. The higher you turn the dial, the hotter the mantle gets. If you're distilling a high boiling liquid, it's useful to wrap the hot parts of the apparatus in glass wool. However, t butyl chloride boils at a very low temperature, 50 degrees C, and it's better here to leave the glass wool off so we can see what's going on in the flask. As the flask heats up, you'll notice the liquid boil. Once it begins boiling, the vapor in the apparatus will climb up until it eventually touches the thermometer bulb. Then you'll notice a temperature rise on the thermometer. Then you'll notice vapor starting to condense in the condenser, becoming a liquid, and rolling down the condenser into the collection vessel. t butyl chloride boils in the range of about 48 to 52 degrees Celsius, so you'll want to collect the fraction that boils in that range. Sometimes with distillations, you'll get what's called a forerun, which is lower boiling material than the material you intend to collect. In those cases, you discard that forerun, that lower boiling impurity material. But in this case, in the t butyl chloride experiment, there's nothing that's lower boiling. So we're just going to see the first fraction boil between 48 and 52. Once you've collected the material that boils in the desired range, you might notice a couple of things. The temperature in the thermometer might drop. That would be because there's no more vapor keeping the thermometer bulb hot, which would indicate that your material is done distilling. The other thing you could notice is that the temperature on the thermometer bulb might rise, it might go up. That would indicate that another fraction is starting to come over, a different higher boiling material that is different in composition from the thing you want. In today's experiment, it's pretty much just tert butyl chloride and there's nothing higher boiling that will be coming over. So you can just stop it as the temperature begins to drop. 
The other thing you want to watch for is keep an eye on the level of the material in the distilling flask, the flask that gets hot. You don't want to distill the dryness. You don't want to keep heating the flask until there's nothing left in the bottom. You need to leave a little bit in there. The reason is, is that as the flask dries out, it gets very, very hot and residues that are hard to remove can form in the bottom. And in some cases, you can even get things called peroxides, which are explosive. So it's important to not distill the dryness. We're going to zoom in here for a close-up where you can see the liquid boiling in the distilling flask. And as we pan up, you can see the thermometer bulb there. As we go higher, we're going to go up past the thermometer adapter and take a look at the temperature of the boiling liquid. You can see here it's at about 48, 49 degrees Celsius, which is the boiling point of tert butyl chloride. When the liquid condenses in the condenser, it rolls down the condenser to the right and then catches in the collection flask on the right. Control the drip rate based on the setting on the variable transformer. What you aim for is a drip rate of about one to two drops per second. If it goes a lot slower than that, the thermometer might not stay hot enough to measure an accurate boiling point. You can change the collection vessel as frequently as needed to collect different fractions. In a typical distillation, you'll have one or more liquid fractions that you collect, and then there'll also be a residue left in the distilling flask. In today's experiment, T-butyl chloride is fairly pure and will only collect one fraction. When the distillation is complete, turn off the power and lower the heating mantle to allow the distillation flask to cool. Wait till the apparatus is cool before you disassemble the hot parts of it. This will prevent vapor from entering the lab. Finally, determine the mass of your product and record that value in your notebook. The typical yield for this experiment is 6.34 grams. If you found this video useful, check out the next one in the series or watch the prior video. And consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. My name is Brant Kudrowski. Thanks for watching.